Shalom to all my dear friends, to all the people of Netivot Israel, and to anyone who will listen to this uh, Shi'ur, this Dvar Torah. Uh, first, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, give you a bracha since tonight is the Hilula of Rabbi Meir Ba'al Anes, Zechutot again Ba'adchem, Ba'adenu, Ba'ad Kol Klal Yisrael, and Yehir Atzon. In the zechut of Rabbi Meir Ba'al Anes El Ahad Meir Aneni El Ahad Meir Aneni El Ahad Meir Aneni Hakadosh Baruch Hu should be mevatel kol gezot kashot va'arot and this magifah from the olam. We are also the day of Pesach Sheni and uh, the day before Kriyat Torah, which Shabbat we're going to read Parashat Emo. So I'm going to speak about Parashat Emo. In uh, after Shlishi, when we begin Revi'i, by the Bar Hashem and Moshe Lemo, the Bar Ben Yisrael and Matah Alehem, Moadei Hashem, Moshe Tikro Otam Yirka Kodesh Alehem Moadei. The Ramban Rashi right there says the Bar Ben Yisrael Moadei Hashem Asa Moadot Sheyihu Yisrael Melum Madim Bahem. Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us holidays, and the Ramban calls this parasha Parashat Hamoadot. And it's called Parashat Amoadot because Parashat Emo speaks about the laws of all the holidays that we have of Pesach, Sfirat Omer, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Something very interesting happens right in between. Be'azat Hashem, when you read it on Shabbat, please pay attention. The minute you, we, uh, the Torah, ends of speaking about Pesach and then goes into Shavuot right before Hamishi the end of Revi'i there's one Pasuk over there that speaks about something that has nothing to do or at least no connection to the Mu'adot to the holidays and what is it? the Pasuk says so I'd like to remind you that this speaks about at the time of harvest, when you go to your field and you have stalks of, uh, of uh, wheat that fall out of your hands, uh, you should leave them there. There's a corner of the field of the land that we should also leave and not cut. That's for the Anim. And there's also another mitzvah, which is called Shikha. If we forget some bundles in the field after we had left the field, we cannot come back and take them. Now, what does this mitzvah uh, do in the midst of speaking about the holidays? So that's the first question. And that's the question. But in order to understand this question, I'm going to speak a little bit, very briefly, about Hilchot Tzedakah. The Rambam explains to us, every Jew, must give tzedakah. What is tzedakah? A minimum that we must give is 10% ma'asir. To whom do we give it? We can give it to whomever we want. But he says, there is a preference. The preference is, first, if you have a poor person in your family, you should first give to that, to those people. If, Baruch Hashem, you don't have any poor people in your family, then you give them to Aniya Ircha, to the poor people of your city. Let's say, Baruch Hashem, you live in a very rich city. I don't know what it is, but very rich city. You have no Aniyim in that city. Then you give them to Aniya Ircha. But giving tzedakah, you can go knock at the door of that needy person and tell him, I am so and so. And I'm here giving you the check because I know, Diana, you have nine children and I know that you need, here's the money. And you're doing the mitzvah of tzedakah? Yes, you are. And the guy tells you, thank you very much. I really would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yes, and you did tzedakah. But in the hilchot, in the halachot pertaining to leket, shikha and pe'ah, I have nothing to say. 
It's not in my hands. I cannot give it to any Ani. First of all, it's very little. The leket is only if two stalks of grain of wheat fall. More than that, I can pick them up. But every time I cut and I have two stalks that fall, one or two, I leave them for the Ani. Pay is how much? One sixtieth of the field of the land I should leave not cut so the anim can come in. Shikha is forgetting. So what does that mean? Because since I have a big field, I do my harvest and when I do it, I do bundles of, of wheat. The bundles, I have five bundles here, eight bundles over there, four bundles here, two bundles here, three. And then at the end of the day, I gather them all and I'll take them to my warehouse. What about if I forget one bundle or two? I don't come back. Those stay for the Ani, for the Ani, for the poor people. More than that, I can come back. But if let's say I forgot those bundles and I had a beautiful crop of, of uh, harvest, can I call someone that I know or someone that's close to me who is a poor person and needy, can I call him and tell him, go and take from my field? No, I can't. And if let's say it happens that I come back the next day and I am in my field and I see poor people coming in and I see an old guy trying to bend down to take those stalks from the floor, can I help him? No, I can't. I have to be out of the picture from the tzedakah that I'm doing in that field. I have no preference to give it to someone. I cannot help them. And we'll explain why. Now that's the difference between this mitzvot related to the field and the mitzvah of tzedakah that I do with my money. Now, in Masechet Baba Batra, in, sorry, in Masechet Yebamot, Daf Memzain, the Gemara speaks over there about Hilchot Gerim. Uh, Gerim is a convert, a non-Jew who would like to become Jewish. Although we don't promote Judaism, but if someone is sincere and he comes and he wants to become a Jew, we have to accept him. But we must, first of all, try to push him away and to tell him that it's very difficult, which it is. And then the Gemara goes on. We must tell him and describe to him the mitzvot hamorot, the hard mitzvot, the difficult mitzvot to do. Then we have to give him also the mitzvot kalot, the easy mitzvot, the beautiful mitzvot that we do, the enjoyable ones and the easy ones. And then the Gemara goes, and we have to also stress out the point to him that a Jew who has a field must give leket, shikha, and pe'a, and we must explain to him how does that work. Now, really, why is it so important for us, for someone who didn't learn all the mitzvot yet, and he has so much to learn, Hilchot Shabbat, he's going to learn about Muktse, he's going to learn about Borer, uh, he's going to learn about Yom Kippur, he's going to learn about all these mitzvot that he has to learn to put on filin every day, the daily mitzvot he has to do. We have to go and now uh, uh, bother him with this mitzvot of Leket Shechai and Peah. So, in order to understand this, I'd like to share with you an insight which is brought in Masechet Abu Dazara, Daf Yudhet. And it speaks about the famous big Talmud Hacham, Tana, who used to teach Torah to hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of Talmudim that he had. That's Rabbi Hanina ben Teradion. So the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbanan, Keshehala Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma. One time Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma fell ill. And Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma is the master, the teacher of Rabbi Hanina ben Teradion. By the way, as I said before, tonight, 
is the Hilul of Rabbi Meir Ba'al Anes. Rabbi Meir Ba'al Anes was married to Gruria. Gruria is the daughter of Rabbi Hanina ben Tiraja. So one time, Rabbi Hanina came to visit his, his master when he fell ill. When he came in, Rabbi Yusuf ben Kismat Terzim Hanina Beni. I heard that you're teaching Torah in public. And you know that the Romans came here. They burnt Yerushalayim. They burnt the, the Bet HaMikdash. And I'm afraid for you. Why are you doing this? We have to be very careful. So, Rabbi Hanina ben Dusa Tazim, Mina Shamayim Rahamu. Heavens will have mercy on you. So, Rabbi Yossi exclaimed, exclaimed I'm telling you words of substance I care for you and you're responding heaven will show mercy I will not be surprised if you get caught and you get burnt you and the Sefer Torah that you carry with you and the Gemara goes on to say that unfortunately it did happen he got caught and he got burnt him and the Sefer Torah that he was carrying and he was one of Asara Haru of the ten, uh, uh, the ten Sadiqim, the ten Tanaim that were killed were from the uh, Roman uh, kingdom. That we have the Kinan Tisha B'Av and, and in, in great details. However, right after that, the Gemara says that Rabbi Hanina ben Dusa asked his Rabbi, Rabbi, Mani please tell me. Where do I stand with regard of Ulamaba? And Rabbi Yos and Rabbi Yossi asks him, Hamale, Klumma Is there any particular act in your life that you can tell me that you have done something special? And Rabbi Hanina bin Dusa took some time, a few minutes, and he tries to go at the span of his life to find one particular act that he did. And then he tells him, Rabbi, I have something to tell you. I remember now an action, an action that I did. What did you do? He says, well, on one Purim, I was collecting money for the Anim and I put them in one pocket. And I had my own money in the other pocket, which I needed to spend for the Suda of Purim and for the expenses of Purim. Unfortunately, they got confused, the money, and they got mixed. So I didn't know which pocket was this money, which pocket was mine, which pocket was the money of Tzedakah. And do you know what I did? I took the entire money, the total man money that I have, that I had, from the Tzedakah and from my own money, I put them in one, in uh, one pouch, and I gave them all to Tzedakah. When Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma heard that, he told him, Rabbi Hanina, I'll pray to Hashem that I will be Zohed, that I will merit to be next to you in the world to come, in Olam Abba. Now the question is asked. We have just spoken that Rabbi Hanina ben Tehrajun sacrificed himself. He gave himself, he even died for Libuda Torah. Isn't there something more important than Talmud Torah? He taught Torah publicly. He taught Torah to hundreds of people. Isn't that a mitzvah enough to take him to Olam Abba that his master has to ask him, is there any particular act that you did during your life? Yes, Hachamim tell us. Rabbi Yosef ben Kisma wanted to teach Rabbi Hanim al All the teaching of Torah that you have done was publicly. Everyone knew about it. I'm looking for an action that you have done only for HaKadosh Baruch between you and Hashem. Those are the acts that Hashem wants. Those are the acts that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would like to find in a person. A pure act done L'Shem Shamaim for HaKadosh Baruch Hu solely. An act that you are not expecting any thanks. 
an act of no acknowledgement. An act that nobody knows but you and Akadosh Baruch That is called a pure act. Akadosh Baruch doesn't look for great actions. He looks for the sincere, pure ones that were made only for him. True, people are doing big mitzvot, big tzedakot, big philanthropists. But they have plaques everywhere. Their names is everywhere. That's public. What about those actions? This is why when a non-Jew comes, wants to enter the Klal Yisrael, we tell him, yes, we have difficult mitzvot. We have easy mitzvot. But you must remember, Hashem likes the mitzvot where you have no thank you. In the Leket Shechau Pe'ah, you have to be absent. You cannot be there. So none of the poor people should come and say, Oh, you're the owner of the field? I want to thank you. There's no thanks. There's no acknowledgement. There's nobody who knows what you're giving to whom you're giving. Because it's an action that Kadosh Baruch wants you to do between you and him. And Shikha is the only mitzvah that if you know about, you're not performing that mitzvah. Shikha is something that you forgot. Hashem gives you the zechut to have Shikha. Not everybody has Shikha. Not everybody forgets the bundles of wheat that he, that he prepared on that day. If you have a good truck and you have good eyes, good eyesight, and you have good workers with you, you're going to pick up everything. So you didn't forget anything. And if purposely you would leave some bundles over there, that's not called Shekha. It's not the mitzvah of Shekha. That's why this is the only mitzvah you can perform without knowing that you are performing it. And that's what we teach this person who would like to come now to Judaism. And that's why this Pasuk of these beautiful actions, of this mitzvah, of this mitzvot of Leket and Pea come right in between the holidays. Why? Because the first holiday was Pesach. Then he speaks about Sefirat Omer. Then he speaks about Shavuot. What does Shavuot symbolizes? Shavuot symbolizes Matan Torah. We receive the Torah. Only someone who received the Torah and learned the Torah can get to this kind of chesed, to this kind of actions. And you must remember, after we had received the Torah, these are the actions that we as Jews must search for and look for during our life in this world. These are the actions we have to strive for. Those that we have no big thank you, no plaques, no... Nobody knows about them. And then, right after that comes, talking about the holiday of Rosh Hashanah, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Ah, now after Shavuot you receive the Torah. And if you understand that the right actions that I'm looking for are those ma'asim that you do, those actions that you do, only between you and me, then I guarantee you, you're going to have a beautiful year. A beautiful and a sweet year. Now you can have a Shana Tova. And therefore then, we continue. Rosh Hashanah, Kippur, and Sukkot, where Kadosh Baruch will reside with us in our Sukkah. In conclusion, I think that these days of confinement, there are some things positive about it. Because there's a lot of mitzvot that we do only between us and Hashem. Personally, I can tell you, I sit here in this room so many hours which I had never had the chance to do. And I find Sfarim which I never had the opportunity nor the chance to open. And Baruch Hashem, Ashrechem Yisrael, what we see here in Brooklyn, and we see all the Jews who are doing so much Hesed. So many Jews are helping others, are helping families who went through tragedies or even those who who are who are having difficult times they're giving them money they're going to stores and putting money as credit for people they don't even know you come with your phone number and you get and you're being helped and you don't know who gave you the money and you're on it it's a ma'ase it's an act that will bring them to olam abba akadosh baruch Hu says those are the sincere actions i want you to do those that nobody knows between you and me shabbat shalom evoach thank you